Hey everybody, and welcome back to Take Your Time Gaming. I'm your Captain Wesley. This is episode 5 of Titanic Adventure Out of Time. So, if you'll remember in the last episode, we got involved in a weird love triangle with Georgia and her husband. We uh, played marriage counselor for them briefly, but uh, also uh, learned of the Conklin's issues conceiving a child and uh, the nefariousness with their maid. And we also ruined some poor photographer's pictures for apparently no reason, because we didn't learn anything about it, except that we're really terrible at developing photographs. So, I'm going to go back to the original intent of the mission, and if you'll remember, PP gave us the mission, uh, Penny Pringle, to get into the wireless room. So we talked to the deck officer, who said he was missing his binoculars, and I, I think we should just wander around on the deck and see if we can find them for a little bit because that seems like our only way to get access to the wireless room safely. So, let's go back out, take in the breezy night sea air, and see if we can find some binoculars around somewhere. I have no idea where they would be. I think uh, access up there was the boat deck, so let's go up to the boat deck. Because I don't know why they would have been messing around on the uh, on the passenger decks, so I think it's more likely they're hanging out here somewhere. So while I zip around the island, uh, I'll bring you guys back as soon as I find the important binoculars, if they exist at all. What is this? It's Come like here. a creepy meeting of the creepy people. Oh, hello. Don't you love the sea air? <sighs> really clears out the sinuses. Max Seidelman, Philadelphia, <laughs> PA. Buyer for Haymakers Department Store. The shoppy of Spruce Street, they call me. You a sporting type? You look like the sporting type. Come on down to the smoking room for a nightcap. Riviera's looking for someone to play a few hands of blackjack with. What do you say? Not much else to do. Not tonight. Brr. Cold as a cast iron commode. So, what do you say? Uh, you sound like a card sharp to me, but also you were just complaining about Riviera taking all your money, so maybe you're just setting me up by complaining about Riviera taking all your money. I mean, Riviera was not the most trustworthy character in Dust anyway. He was always kind of, uh, suspicious. So, however, there's no better place to get some information about the people you're dealing with than a card game, so let's go ahead and go. Great. First, let's swing by the Parisian Cafe. There's a man there named Zeidel, a German. Claims he's a businessman, but he's got something up the sleeve, all right. I know the type, believe me. Dollars to donuts, he's in some racket. So come with, why don't you? We'll hit the smoking room from there. Hey, Colonel, how you doing? Willie, like you to meet a friend. A pleasure. Oh, now you're willing to talk to me. Hedelitz and I. We welcome diversion during such an uneventful passage, don't we? Certainly. Willy is at the University of Vienna, dissecting children's fable. C cultural mythology, it's quite interesting. So only a junior professor, I tried to interest Dr. Freud. He's a genius, and I, I... Yes, I am sure, quite. On the passenger list, it says you embarked at Cherbourg. Yet I have not seen you with the others. You were there, were you not? Uh, I don't make much of an entrance. I see. You are British. Not so many of you in Titanic's first cabins. These days, most of the rich are Americans. Businessmen like Max. Mm. Tell me, why do you go to New York? Well, I, uh, I'm on business. Business? How interesting, considering the British are not so good at it. Well, you're just... I mean, what do you do, Mr. Mr. Rude Face? Me? Inspecting our embassies. Imperial Germany desires to make a good impression in North America. Billy is continuing on, to the west, uh, to conduct research on Aboriginal custom. The Indians. They are fascinating. Yes, yes. However, I place faith in science, not super... The colonel was saying this wireless stuff's revolutionizing everything. Sending messages to each other. 
It's the end of books and newspapers. Like the Titanic, <laughs> a technological triumph. Here we dined in comfort while racing along at 20 knots. It's still tied to the outside world by the wireless. That reminds me, Colonel Seidel, when I go to send you a telegram, they told me it was to be delayed. There are too many messages. The passengers... I am sure our guests do not care to hear a detailed discussion of your encounter with telegraphy. Oh, but no. If you Carry excuse on. Excuse me. Please, excuse us. Won't you call on us tomorrow? Here, in the cafe. The lens are torts quite passable for a British ship. Stop by. Billy and I welcome it most heartily. Yes, most heartily. And before I leave, you <laughs> must allow me to give you some advice. But do not wander the ship. It is not good, I think, on a ship as big as the Titanic. Good night, friends. Good night. What does that even See, mean? What did I tell you? What did I say? Them too. Up to something, I'd say. The brainy kid gives me the creeps. What a grind. He should hang out with that little blonde. She's a look, I tell you. Come on, let's hit the smoking room. What do you say? Thanks for that unsolicited commentary. Uh, sure, let's go. Uh, you seem to be giving me important information, so... Great. Go on up. I gotta see a man about a horse. I'll meet you in a few. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, so we've made some progress here. It was important for us to finally meet Zytel and, uh... What was the other guy's name? Oh yeah, Hydrolitz. Hydrolitz and Zytel. So, we've learned that they are pretty pompous. Uh... They have left their pipe behind, which I will throw in my suitcase because I am an opportunist. Perhaps we can have a, have a reading done on that pipe. Still nothing but China here. So I think we need to go back to the smoking lounge if we wish to progress a bit further. Uh, I never did find the binoculars up on the boat deck. I'm going to spend a little bit more time searching because there were a few places that I didn't look. And then I'll bring you back like I did last time if something interesting happens. Other than these strangely congregating people everywhere, I don't really see anything up here. I wonder who that gentleman is. Have you seen Georgia? Oh, it's you. Uh, I don't know where she is. Don't care for me much, do you? I mean, not really. It's, uh, you don't seem to care about her very much. But what makes you say that? There's much you don't know. Uh, let's discuss it, uh, over a drink. I mean, I, I need more information, so... You've already had a few drinks. Let's see what you'll tell me. It is freezing out here. Uh, shall we? Oh, much better. Mm. A bartender of whiskey and soda. Yes, much better indeed. Now. So, you said there's much I don't know. You may have heard I am in financial street. I've borrowed money from Andrew Conkling. Money that he is now demanding I pay back. I've none to give. Poverty should remain the domain of the virtuous. I have no taste for it. <laughs> so are you trying to tell me that you need money? No, 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 no. I'll ask first why was Georgia afraid of you tonight? Because really, you need to watch yourself, man. Georgia? Afraid of me? <laughs> well, that would be a reaction at least. We no longer evoke emotion in each other. We're a husband and wife in name only. Well, that's disappointing. Uh, so are you trying to tell me that you need money? <laughs> to tell you. <laughs> no, I shall fix things first. And without Georgia. Another drink? Uh, another whiskey for, um... <laughs> and charge it to room C-73. Is that the photographer's room? I don't know. I don't think it is, but, uh... Yeah. I hope you don't mind if I do. Now... You, uh, want to know some No, that's secrets. my room. Uh, thank you, bartender. I'll tell you one. George's diamond necklace. It's a fake. The one on her oh. neck, leastways. I gave the real necklace to Sasha. It's in his cabin for safekeeping. When he gets to New York, he'll sell it. Quickly and quietly. For 20% commission. I'll pay off my debts to Conkling. Put Georgia away. 
sail back to England free and clear. Okay, so that's an interesting bit of news. I'm glad I uh, accidentally bought him a drink, not realizing that was my own cabin. But because I char I, I paid for his bar bill, he gratefully told me a secret that uh, George's necklace is a fake. And the real one is in Sasha's quarters because uh, Sasha and uh, apparently Sasha and Conkling are in, or no, I'm sorry, he and Sasha are in cahoots to uh, take this necklace and use it as a down payment on his debts to get himself out of trouble, which we all know will probably not end very well. I beg your pardon, you have something to say? So, we need to find out what Sasha's room is, it is, which I think we can go to the purser and ask about that. But So let's see if we can pump him for any more information. So why doesn't Sasha sell it for Georgia? Because I threatened to tell Scotland Yard about his Serbian Aid Society, and because Sasha's a greedy bastard, he'd betray his love for 20%. <laughs> and Georgia thinks she's outsmarted. No, she's got a fake about her neck and doesn't know. Another? Not for me, Charles. Good night, then. You'll sleep well. The uh, whiskey and the sea are both smooth for a change. Okay, that's very interesting information. But while we're here, we can join the card game over at the table with Mr. Riviera and the uh, purported card sharp. How you doing? You at Fleece, you too? <laughs> you know... You're letting me do all the talking. If you don't mind me asking, just why are you headed to New York? Work. <laughs> Guess we all got our secrets, don't we? See you around. Good night. I thought we were gonna play a play a game of cards. Game, mon ami? No. Good night. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get another reading from Mr. Trask. On this pipe and see what he knows. Speed down the cabins. Unfortunately there are no vending machines on the Titanic and uh, that's really a disappointment because late at night sometimes nothing hits the spot better than a Snickers and uh, a can of soda of some kind. Right. Hello. In need of psychic consultation. Yes, please read this pipe, please. Uh. Pipe, please. Hmm. You know, a medium told me the only danger in my life would come on water. Salt or fresh, she did not say. Damn it all, I wish they'd be more specific. That pipe's <laughs> been someplace quite humid recently. I'd visit the Turkish bath. Good luck. Excellent. We have not been Good to night. the Turkish bath. Thank you again for your insight. Trained in the art of deduction, no doubt, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Although I suppose I should say the science of deduction. Sherlock would chastise me for that. So before I go to the Turkish bath, I really want to see if I can find the binoculars. I don't know why I think they're up with everything else, but it makes the most sense that they're near the guy who says uh, he's lost them. I mean, you, you very rarely put misplace something very far away from yourself, so... Interesting fact, uh, the, on the real ship, there is, was a pair of binoculars available in the crow's nest, which the lookout should have been using uh, to, to look out, obviously, for icebergs, among other things. But because there was only one guy who had the key, and that guy was not on the maiden voyage of the Titanic because he was, uh, his services were not required for this voyage, no one had the key for the binoculars in the crow's nest. 
which means that no one was using them on the ill-fated uh, encounter with the iceberg. So that's a fun fact that uh, makes you realize uh, a lot of things could have gone better for the Titanic, and all of this wouldn't have had to happen. I don't see anything from this vantage point here. No, well, I can look up at the smokestack. There's a ladder on that one. Passengers aren't allowed on the front. Officer Moro's in no mood to accommodate passengers right now. He's misplaced his binoculars, and he's in a right proper state about it. Off with you now. A right proper state he is. Well, I'll we'll see if I can fix that right proper state by finding those binoculars. Had no luck thus far. Okay, well I can't find these uh, anywhere these binoculars so I think they're they must be farther away somewhere and I'm gonna have to run into them later on as I'm exploring the rest of the ship so I know I have a lead on going down to the Turkish bath if I go back to my map let's see where that is down in the bowels of the ship by the stairwell so let's just teleport into the Turkish bath. Very beautiful. I guess it's got to be close to the, the boilers for steam or something. It's a very ornate sink here for washing. I guess I should probably turn the water off. And Oh look, I again have no reflection, sadly. I am a faceless protagonist. Well, let's go into the electric bath, shall we? No entry. No entry. Electric bath we can get into. This <laughs> looks like a medieval torture device or an iron lung or something. Steamer. I guess it's a sauna. Gives out a nice puff of steam every time you click on it. Nothing in that room. Well, that's the only one I can go in, so... Unless there's something I've missed. Nope. They let you just look at this wonderful rep reproduction. I'm sure it's very faithful to the original design in the Turkish bath. Very ornate tables and the... I guess just... Turkish design in general. The question is, what am I supposed to find in here? And investigating these beds gives you the same thing no matter what you do. chair. Oh, it's a scale. A sitting scale. So I suppose you can sit in the Turkish bath and see how much sweat you've sweated off in your bath. Interesting. Eggs of some sort. Oh, 
Well, there doesn't seem to be anything of importance here in the Turkish bath, despite the hint from our clairvoyant. So I suppose we'll have to deal with that later on. Let's go do some more deck exploration. <clears throat> I think we'll start at the second class stairs. Out onto the boat deck again. Well, I, I don't know where we're missing something, I think. So let's go back down to the grand staircase and see if the socialites are mingling and uh, I can learn any more information. Because I need to get into the wireless room. That's like the next step. Anybody in the gymnasium? Nope. Talk to. Once again, you still cannot go in the first class lounge. Uh, let's go check out uh, Penny's Pringle, her quarters, which she told us were F-34 from the second class stairs. So let's go talk to her and see if she can give us any guidance here. B deck, I need to go down to F deck. Down the stairs we go. Certainly getting our exercise in on this giant ship. If they had security cameras on this ship, they would just be sitting here going, where is this guy going? He just keeps wandering, wandering aimlessly across the entire ship. And to that I say, yes. F-34. Try to intercept Zeitel's telegrams. Get inside the wireless. Surely someone on board knows what he's up to. And don't forget the cryptograph in your trunk. It will unscramble the German codes. Most importantly, find the Rubaiyat. Meanwhile, I'll conduct my own investigation. Off with you now. Go. <laughs> what are you what are you investigating in there? There can't be anything inside and the internet hadn't even been invented yet, so you're basically just sitting in there reading a book, telling me to go do my own mission. What kind of partner are you? Okay, I've got to find the binoculars, so I'm just gonna explore forever until I find binoculars, guys, and then when I find them, I will come back to you. So I've re-engaged with uh, Officer Morrow to try to get more information out of him because maybe I'm maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree and I and I just need to schmooze with them because that seems to be the theme of the game is to uh, schmooze with the socialites and flatter them and tell them nice things and see if they'll help you out. Um, so let's uh, let's start off with a comment about the weather. Let's see if it appears calm. Yes, very calm. Let's see, uh... North Atlantic is still cold in April. Are you concerned about the weather? It's a clear night, but dark. You seemed a little worried about something. No moon. I don't like that. Can't see what's coming. No moon means surprises. As if we don't have enough already. Mr. Ismay, the White Star Line's president's on board. 
We're walking eggshells round him, I tell you. <laughs> Though that's nothing compared to the creeping about my brother-in-law's doing at the bank. His entire London office is in an uproar. <laughs> what could you elaborate? Tom works in the Admiralty. Seems our plans for troop deployments against Germany disappeared three weeks ago. Tom says the big boys are petrified the Jerry's will get wind of it. Could upset the balance of power. Politics. Desktop espionage. Bureaucrats. Pa, give me the C. You can toss the rest. So, uh, oddly, all of these people on the ship are strangely connected to the international affairs of the world. And this guy apparently knows that classified British intelligence has been stolen. And nobody knows why. So, for some reason, uh, let's see if we can press for more information here. I don't know if I'm going to outright ask and say, tell me more. Uh, let's ask about Tom. That sounds really interesting. Tell me about Tom. You ask a lot of questions. Ones I don't want to answer. Uh, you don't care much for bureaucrats, then. Never have. Not since the war. So you were in, uh, which war were you in? Uh, what war? Well, that's kind of a, a tough question. They say war is unthinkable in this modern age. Then why are so many people thinking about it? You are lucky that you survived it. Lucky? No, I wouldn't think that I was. Hmm. That's perhaps too true. Okay, well, what war was that? South Africa. Boer War. The officer was a drinker. He was drunk when they trapped us out on the belt. On a moonless night, it was a massacre. We never saw them coming. Drink always leads to the devil. I see. So no wonder he has a fear of moonless nights with uh, a story like that from the war. No wonder moonless nights make you jumpy. An interesting connection. For all I know, it could be true. A man's got his troubles. Sick child, being away from home. But I hate whiners and apologizers. Well, thank you for your insight. Uh, you're on duty, so I don't want to make you, uh, I'll offer you a drink and have you be on duty. But I guess I can ask. I'll ask if it's his watch tonight. Yes, though the only thing to watch is the wireless room. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep bringing up more messages. Wireless telegraphy is all the rage these days. The wireless is quite a toy. Uh, let's not be too too uh, direct. Let's say that sounds really interesting. You know, Marconi, just a big fan of Marconi. Tell me more. A toy? Certainly not. It's quite important. This is the officer's promenade. No passengers allowed. Good night. Oh, I failed. I failed that check. Hello. What? Okay, so the game crashed. Uh, so I think that's a good time to take a break. That'll be the end of episode five here, Titanic Adventure Out of Time. We just were uh, denied access to the wireless room, so we've got to find another way to get in. And the only other thing left outstanding, other than trying to schmooze with the other guy, which I don't think will work, is to find the binoculars, which are somewhere on the ship. And that should get us uh, digging through the bowels of the ship to try to f see anything or meet anybody we haven't already met and uh, hopefully close up the rest of that investigation. Because we've got to get in there so we can get access to the telegraphs, which is our primary mission on board. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you tuning in and taking the time to watch these videos. I always love to hear from you guys, any comments you have about the game or comments about uh, the setting, the Titanic itself. It's To me, I'm a big history nerd, so it's kind of a super interesting look at the ship and the time period. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Cheers.